Holly, Holly. <laughs> it's okay. Thanks for joining us for the feature film. Um, click, click, click. Uh, hey, what's up, guys? Benji and Anthony here again at the bar, and we're actually going to be reviewing today Edge of Seventeen. It just came out this year. It's written and directed by Kelly Freeman Craig, and. This movie divides us a little bit on what we think about movies. It actually got a 94% on Rotten Tomatoes, which is a high score, apparently, to Anthony. So, uh, you know what, guys? Let's get into it. So, Edge of 17 is kind of like that midlife crisis for teens, you could say. Um, everybody, Very I feel well like, goes, uh, everybody goes through a certain phase of this um at this age and it starts off with nadine um played by Haley steinfeld she's actually a singer i don't know if you know that as well she, she has an album she has a couple cool songs um but it starts off with her uh, being a, a younger kid you know i think she was seven at the time and she's kind of bullied throughout um yeah. being a kid and then she finds one of her best friends which is krista played by another Haley. i know <laughs> Haley lou richardson um and they become best friends and she kind of finds somebody that she's very um relatable to and i think a lot of us have been through that where we find that one friend that we could relate to and even though like the world seems like it's crashing down with you which is kind of weird at age seven i do agree with certain stuff like that right but um um she finds her and then it goes through her story of how some significant events happen in the movie i don't want to spoil too much of the movie I'm going to recommend for people to watch it. I, I know. I don't know. Anthony's going to give it. Um, but I do. I don't want to spoil too much of what's going on. But one of the big events that happens is that Krista actually starts dating her older brother, which I think they're only a year apart, I believe. Right. right? Um, and that actually kind of, uh, causes controversial um, things to happen in the movie. Not controversial, but conflict. Conflict between and, best friends. Yeah. Uh, not only that... Uh, and it's because she doesn't see her brother as someone like her. Um, she he sees like oh he's a pretty boy. He's thinks about himself a Very lot. Very popular. Works out. Thinks about his body. He has a big ego. It's like yeah, I remember she said something like your head's so big that your body's never gonna catch up. Let's try and insult him like that. Oh yeah. But yeah, and it kind of it, it's a little bit weird because um it you could connect to this girl, but it's an extreme connection. Um, a lot of the things that she does, a lot of the events that happen, um, I think happen on a daily to a lot of us at this age, at age 17, 15 to 17 is when it kind of happens, when a lot of things happen in high school. But for her, it, it's something where it's super extreme. She takes it to the max. Yeah, right? exactly. It's something where she is a little bit selfish. She is a little bit um, kind of an asshole to a lot of people because she says a lot of things to make them feel bad. But I think that's also a self-esteem issue that she has throughout the movie. Or where to self-protect. Like, yeah, you know? exactly. Like a- so like it's a it's a way to kind of make someone else feel like crap, like that you don't feel like crap kind of thing. Yeah. Do you really want me to speak? <laughs> it's it's all your turn, man. Oh my God. I really, really, <laughs> really hated this movie. I think this is probably one of the worst movies I've seen in five years. And I'm not going to uh, tiptoe on around it. I hated the dialogue. Yeah. I did not like the character development. And I understand that this may be Kelly Craig's first directorial debut, but she could have done better in my my book. Um, I, now, I, I kind of just want to shut up already. I, I don't even know what to say. No, but see, that's, I think that's why we want to do this because we want to explain why. Like, I mean, like again, again, one of the big things about our channel is that we're, there's a big age difference here. Yeah. Um. So we really, I, I feel like because of the age difference, there's also times and moments in movies that we can relate. So one of my things is that I could relate to this movie a lot. I've been through certain situations where I felt like I was alone, and and I I felt that in uh, Nadine, she felt alone when she really wasn't. She had had her brother she had her friend but she pushed him away because of events that happened and it happens yeah. well when you're a kid another thing is that with her mom played by kira um sedgwick sedgwick sorry about, i got a lot of caught <laughs> um the mom wasn't really there the mom was kind Isn't of it, aren't you noticing a pattern in movies that parents are just not there when it comes yeah. to the teenagers <laughs> but i think that's that's a lot of things to do with nowadays you know social media kind of separates you even from your family sometimes you know right. and i feel like that's the thing like the mom wasn't there because of a a, a past event that happened with a family member and that was a situation where it, it separated them but the daughter was a lot like the mom in the sense of 
they cared about only their problems and not about each other's. And then when they did care about each other's, they really didn't care because the, their problems were bigger the, uh, to the right. world, you know. And that was an issue to me. To me, that was kind of an issue because the dialogue used behind that was kind of Juno-ish. It was kind of like an adult, a, a kid talking like an adult, and it's weird. And to it me. doesn't work, right? I, I don't like that. I don't really like the way that that conversation happens, but. It's a relatable topic. Um, I know something we were talking about earlier was kind of like um, how the movie didn't fit. It kind of felt like it was all over the place for you, right? right? Like scenes were just kind of like attached to each other and they kind of didn't mesh correctly. Yeah, like I didn't feel like that because I felt like everything kind of went. But I do understand why you might feel like that. I feel like that because she was out she was out there like sh everything she did had to be dramatized yeah. so it was kind of like wait did you just do that and nothing happened kind of there's thing no <laughs> it seems like there's no consequences for her and she doesn't take accountability for the actions that she does and for me i was just like what am i watching this in what world is this real and maybe that just shows that me as a 40 something year old that doesn't happen back when i was 17 you know i know i would have been like hey you did this and now you're gonna pay for this because you know, actions lead to consequences, right? And I think that's a lot to do with culture as well. Like, a lot of cultures were different. Right. Um, it, it is something where, like, I would do the same thing. There's a scene in the movie where she actually steals the car. And I, in no way, shape, or form, I think I would ever get away with that. Like, you know, and it was something where... But I think that's why I love this movie. Because I would have wanted to do that. I would have wanted to just say, you know... Forget everything, you know, F you, F you, let me get this car and just take off because sometimes you're just upset. Sometimes you're just mad. And sometimes you do feel like the world is crashing down. In the trailer, I believe she's in it. She's like, are you even up there? And she, there's a lot of reference to right. like God and stuff. Right. And, and even then, like, I, I think everybody's had that moment where they just feel like the world is crashing. And especially during this age, because let's be honest, high school can be pretty tough on some kids, you know? Yes. It's one of the hardest times, I think, in, in of your development. It, it's either you're going to, you know skyrocket and be swim. be that brother you know that's going to be popular and 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 you're going to keep going or you're going to be that that loner that kind of didn't have friends and didn't have anybody there but yet those moments actually help you build um and the cool thing is that she actually met somebody one of the love interests in this movie was erwin uh played by hayden's um cedo 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 um I loved him in this movie. I think he was one of the quirkiest. There are some positives dudes. in this movie. I can't just be a downer. Um, you know, part of the world is uh, this teacher, Mr. Bruner, played by Woody Helson and Irwin. Irwin is actually a shining uh, star in this for me because he was actually a cool guy. And it wasn't so like, here's this dramatic storm that I'm watching, you know, Nadine. But let me just focus a little bit on Irwin. He's a, you know, he's kind of like a rich kid. Uh, he's kind of lonely and shy, but he's also a filmmaker, mm -hmm. and he's a really cool guy. I liked him. I, I'm gonna reserve my score to the <laughs> end, but um, he is one of the reasons why. Okay, that I actually like. But him I movie. think that's also a good thing. I think that was a good thing for me. It was the cast. The cast itself was great. Um, Woody Harrelson was in it. Mr. Bruner, he was amazing. I, I had a teacher like him where it was very open relationship. Um, to be able to talk to him like really. Kind of like a father figure, a friend figure, someone that, that that gives you that advice, but not directly. You know, like you you'll be able to um, excuse my language, shoot the shit with that person, and just kind of have a conversation with them. You know, yeah. like it's something where you'll be able to like it, it's a it's a teacher, but not really. I don't know how to explain it. Like I, I, it, that's, like I think a that friend. was a cool thing, and I think um, Haley Steinfeld did amazing in this one. I think she played in a great like over dramatic person but at the same time i i felt passion behind her i felt the tears i felt the sadness and i've seen her in other movies i think she was in pitch perfect 2 i believe was she and yeah I, and yeah, yeah. i didn't I, I personally didn't really like that one and but i think she was great in that one too and i think she has a great future ahead of her like as an actor but um can i say something yeah of course because you like the, we get I, it yeah, you I like this it. i want to hear yeah, i want to hear the um, negatives man <laughs> there is no actually i'm going to say a positive and the thing is there's a scene at the end of, towards the end of the movie or at right at almost at the end of the movie between her brother Darian played by Blake Jenner um that what was it a minute and a half two minutes yeah, scene was, was probably the best scene in the movie so if I could say something great about this film is the scene between her brother and her finally being open and honest with each other and I think that 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 right there was well I was like wow 
and all this crap, there's actually a gem. You know, there's a gem of a scene. So look out for that at the end. I, I think that was another thing. The way it was kind of shot, like um, the the cinematography behind this movie felt more of a. I felt the warmth. And then the cold scenes in the movie, like the the feeling of it, because it looked like a cold town. Um, did they say where it was from? I don't think they ever said no, where remember, where it was no. located, right? So it was something where like they're always wearing sweaters and jackets. It looks like it was like during like a winter time. Mm-hmm. Um, but you could really feel the 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 sad scenes. You could really feel the passionate. You could really feel the heartwarming scenes in that scene specifically. It was a night scene, and mm-hmm. uh, but just that glimpse of like warm light. Really made you feel like at that moment something happened. At that moment, someone realized something, the, and the it turned exactly. In. And I think that's why I really liked this movie as well. It was the way it was just shot. Um, overall, I honestly say like this movie. If you've ever had a rough time in high school, I think any a lot of people relate to this movie. Whether you're Nadine, you're the brother, you're the mom, um, in any of those situations, even the teacher, I feel like you're either or uh, even Irwin. You know, you, you've been that yeah. dude or that girl that, that that's la- always been there. But hey, maybe he's like, you're not being noticed kind of thing, right. you know? And I think it's very relatable. And I personally say, you know what? Like, you guys should go watch this movie in theaters, you know, on a date with some friends. I think you guys would like it. Not me. So as you know, Anthony, I like this movie, but I want to know what you, what's your score, man? Uh, this is probably one of the worst <laughs> films I've seen in the last five or ten years. I give this movie a three. And I don't usually score this low, right? Well, what's the three points that you give me for? Erwin <laughs> uh, was really cool. I liked the dude. Um, I loved Nadine. Uh, Haley, what is it? Hey Steinfeld. Steinfeld. She came <laughs> out in True Grit. Skip this movie. Skip this movie. Go see True Grit. You'll know, have a better time. And then the scene between the brother and her. I see. I'm gonna go higher, man. I'm sorry, but I'm gonna agree with the rest of the world right now. Yeah. And, um, I'm gonna everybody it, loves this movie right now. I'm gonna give it an eight, and pretty much the reason why is because it's relatable. It's something you could honestly say that you've been through, whether it's been a scene with your brother or your friends or your mom. I think this movie, everybody's been through this in high school. Everybody's been through. It. Everybody's been 17 at one point. I think <laughs> it's gonna be. I think that's why it's relatable. And um, the reason it's not a nine out of ten is just like I said before, it's the dialogue. I just felt like it was older. Than it, what it should be kind of thing. So yeah. Hey what's up guys. It's Benjamin Anthony here again. And thank you for joining us for the review of The Edge of 17. Join us on Thursday. We're going to be doing our throwback Thursday. We're going to be doing The Nightmare Before Christmas. Uh, from the great mind of Tim Burton. Yeah so hopefully you guys can join us for that. On the comments down below. Let us know if you've seen the movie Edge of 17. Did you guys like it? Did you guys didn't like it? Let us know. Also have you ever done something crazy at the age of 17? Have you stolen this car? <laughs> or maybe you've texted somebody the wrong thing. Uh, let us know in the comments down below. Don't forget to share this video. We are on Tumblr, Facebook, Instagram, and we especially love our Instagram fans. Yeah, guys, so don't forget to give us a thumbs up or a like on the video if you guys like the video. And also don't forget to subscribe for more awesome films. All right, guys, have a good one. Ugh. Yay! Okay. We don't ever have to talk about this stupid movie again <laughs> except for our bad review. Yeah.